Hello, I'm Michael Elder, and welcome to this overview of our AIG licensure cohort for our seventh cohort in this series. Uh, we began this uh, approximately seven years ago with, with our very first uh, locally supported licensure cohort, and we're excited that you're interested in at least hearing more about this. Um, here over the next few minutes, we're going to walk through um, what the cohort entails, what the application process looks like, um, as well as just some learning from our past participants. Um, if at the end of this you have any questions, we'll give you our contact information. Again, you can contact me, Michael Elder, or Michelle Chadwick, as well as any of our AIG specialists. They would be glad to uh, share with you um, any of the information that we have here, as well as just their personal experience working with gifted students. Um, this flip session is obviously going to be available on our website, um, and this is for adding AIG licensure to your North Carolina teaching license. The advantage of licensure over a certificate is that licensure follows you. So if you do happen to move to another county at some point, hopefully not in the near future, um, but if you leave the county or you even leave the state, things on your license typically go with you. Um, we do also offer the opportunity for local certificate. Um, however, that certificate is good for serving kids who are gifted within Onslow County Schools, but it doesn't necessarily transfer to another district. So this is university coursework, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, you see here on this introductory slide that we do have the application and that it is due by Friday, January 8th. Um, hopefully that gives you enough time to ask any questions as well as to complete the short application. Um, so let's go through what this process looks like and then um, we'll give you again our contact information for any questions. Our ECU professors are Dr. Brian Hausend as well as Dr. Liz Fogarty. Um, they have worked with us and work continually closely with us here in this in this process. So they know uh, Onslow County Schools. They also know um, our past cohort participants. They know the high caliber of teachers that we bring to the cohort. Um, and so they are great to work with and we appreciate their partnership. I mentioned earlier this is our seventh cohort, so we've certainly learned some things along the way. Hopefully it's much smoother now than it may have been in the early years. Um, our overarching goals here are to make sure that teachers have the knowledge and skills needed to meet the needs of gifted students. We understand that in most cases, I know in my case, um, going through it, with an education degree, there was very little time spent on the needs of gifted students as well as how to meet those needs. So this cohort is really focused keenly on the gifted student and how do we differentiate, how do we personalize, how do we create learning environments for our gifted kids. Um, really, we do all things for our kids, right? So this is really about how are we providing our kids with the learning experiences and the environment that they need. The goal of this cohort or these cohorts is not necessarily to increase the number of AIG specialists, although we certainly have hired some of our um, folks who have gone through cohorts as AIG specialists. We want to make sure that people realize that if you're interested in this cohort, it's not about necessarily being hired on as an AIG specialist, although this does give you the credential to do that. This partnership, like I said, is with East Carolina University. You can certainly check out their website and the information they have there about uh, the, the cohort. You can see the, the address here on your screen. Um, this would start, sorry, not in the summer of 2015, but in the summer of 2016. So scratch that out and make that summer 2016. I apologize for that. Um, this would start in the summer of 2016. Um, we'll get those exact dates out to you as quickly as possible. In fact, we'll update this uh, PowerPoint on the website as we have those dates. Um, but what happens is you begin in a blended learning experience with ECU. Um, that blended experience starts online. Uh, and so you'll begin some coursework. You would then spend one week uh, working Sunday to Thursday that week. It's typically the week after July 4th. Um, so like I said, we'll get those exact dates to you. Um, it's working with a camp um, at, around ECU, a camp of gifted students um, from Pitt County Schools, actually. Uh, and you work with those kids during the day while they're at the camp. And then in the afternoons, you have kind of some debriefing and some content course work going on there. 
Um, and then that is your first course, which then goes through another few weeks of the summer. Um, and that is your first course, which is Introduction to Gifted. So the nice thing with that is in Introduction to Gifted, not only do you get the theory, but you also get the practical piece of working with gifted kids at that camp. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that piece in just a little bit. Um, there are four courses in the sequence, so you'll finish that Intro to Gifted in the summer of 2016, then you move into a second course on the actual methods and the materials you use in the fall of 2016, and then we hit differentiation uh, specifically in the spring of 2017, and then you return to that summer camp and summer coursework in summer 2017. However, the second summer is different in that you are actually leading the summer camp. Um, so you get to shadow some folks in the summer of 2016, and then you create a plan during the year, um, and then you implement that plan during the summer of 2017, and that's the culmination of your work. So uh, this is definitely a, a nice chance to get both the practicum piece, uh, working with kids, as well as just the theory piece that goes behind it. And that's one of the reasons that we really appreciate this partnership with ECU is the structure of their program. On behalf of Onslow County Schools, I get to say that we, our intent is to pay for all four courses for the folks that we admit into the cohort. Um, we'll talk about that application here in just a moment. We pay in advance for you. Um, you don't have to go out of pocket for these courses. The assumption is that you finish the coursework. Um, so if for some reason you find that you are not able to finish the coursework, um, then we discuss with you what the implications of that are. Um, if it's a significant concern, a health concern, those things, we certainly understand and we're compassionate with that. Um, however, if you just decide to not finish, then we may need to come back and ask you to pay for that coursework um, because we are trying to make good use of our taxpayer dollars here. However, that is typically not the case, so we're excited to be able to pay um, for the coursework for you and to do it in a way that hopefully lifts any burden that the finances might put on you. This is just the same timeline, um, so I'm just going to jump over this. Um, the only piece that's different in here that you'll see is that in February you need to complete the application with ECU. We'll talk about that here in just one minute. Um, you do need to be a North Carolina resident in order to qualify for Onslow County Schools paying for you. Um, sometimes our military folks um, need to get some special documentation that says that you're military, and we can typically work through that, or the university works through you through that with you. Um, of course, if you're self-paying, you can. anyone is welcome to join the cohort, um, and self-pay candidates can be from out of state, of course. Responsibility-wise, um, we do need to remember this is graduate coursework. Uh, there's a very big difference between professional development, things that I might lead, um, which are much more just the practitioner part, so those things tend to be, hey, try this out, and we'll see how it works. And if you miss a session, we'll try to make it up with you. This is graduate coursework. So there are different levels of expectations for timeliness. Um, you need to be prepared to accept the challenge of graduate coursework, which means there is reading involved, there are assignments, there are deadlines. I will tell you, Dr. Housen and Dr. Fogarty work tremendously hard to meet the needs of you as a busy teacher. Um, but they also want to keep the fidelity of the program, and that requires a certain level of rigor. Um, and so we, do, we don't um, dance around that issue. We want to make sure that you know this is, not, this is a challenging program. Um, there are a couple expenses to you if you decide to participate. Uh, there is an application fee, and uh, Onslow County Schools is not able to pay for you to apply to the program. So that happens in January or February when you actually apply to ECU. Um, if you're currently a student at ECU, you may not have to do that, um, but um, we would work through that with you. Um, the other costs that you may incur as a part of this are the add-on licensure fee. So at the very beginning of the program, you pay to apply, and then at the very end of the program, um, you've got to pay the, right now I think it's $55 to add AIG to your license. Um, so again, that's one other cost that we can't pick up. However, we are picking up the, the $666 or whatever the rate is um, when the courses come out for you. 
the travel and lodging for the week at ECU. Some folks decide to drive back and forth. Other folks decide to stay. Um, ECU gives you the option of utilizing some of the dorm space, which is very inexpensive. Um, so you can decide. The last couple years, we've been able to pay folks just a straight um, kind of a travel reimbursement. I think it's been like $200 uh, to help you with the, the cost of gas or the cost of staying up there. That may not cover all those costs. Um, and as long as our budget holds out for that, we're glad to extend that to the next cohort as well. So we just want to make sure everybody knows there are some costs that are going to be that you may find uh, on your behalf. So what are the benefits of participating in the cohort? Um, nine of these 12 credits, the four classes equal 12 credits, can be applied towards certain master's degrees. So if you're thinking about going for a master's, a lot of times these can fill in uh, the, the, the elective requirements for your master's degree. So that can be a real cost savings right there. Uh, in addition, ECU currently doesn't offer a master's degree in gifted, so it has to be a, a master's in another field. Um, the big one to me is that, and to our students, is that standard 3D in our AIG program standards says what it says here on your screen, that AIG students are placed in classrooms with teachers that have met our professional development requirements or have a license. So we know that's a, that's a large task in a district our size, um, especially as transient as, as our folks are but we're not we're willing to accept that challenge so um, we we allocate resources towards this and hopefully you'll be one of the people that um, soon has that license and is meeting the needs of those kids in addition to having the license probably most importantly is the professional development piece of this i know personally having gone through the aig licensure cohort that it's some of the best professional development whether you're working with gifted students or just all students um, and it's at a level that you won't typically get in a professional development um, you're going to get that mix of theory and practice as we've talked about before um, it is a lot of ceu credits if you like that since it's graduate coursework it does count for ceu credits you certainly would want to contact um, the professional development services division to make sure you get those ceus uh, but that's another potential benefit I've chatted about these. Um, graduate school is a commitment, um, and so it does take time. There is a challenge involved. It means sacrificing. I know for any of us, and many of you have probably gone through a master's degree, you know that means there are certain weekends you have to give up certain things, and that is sacrifice. Um, so we don't, we want to make sure we lay that out in advance. However, it's a sacrifice, I think, in the long run that's really worth it. Um, it does require you to think differently. The professors will ask you to submit things and then reconsider it and think again with a partner and really get deep into what are we doing, how are we doing it, and why are we doing it that way. That's a real challenge because for me personally, I like to do something and then I know I'm done with it and I get to move on. Um, and so this is asking a much deeper level of thought than that. However, it is worthwhile. Uh, so it's okay, and several folks in the past have said, you know what, right now is not the right time, but maybe next year. And then the next year comes along and they say, yep, this is the right time. So if that's you, that's okay. We're going to plan on continuing having a cohort 8, 9, 10 in the future. Um, but if I was to kind of put this into one short sentence, it would be, if you're going to do the cohort, you've got to say, you know what, this is my focus for the next year. Starting the summer of 2016, my focus is is getting this license. Um, so if that's you, we welcome you to apply. And if you're interested now, um, we're going to share with you the, the uh, application. We're going to get that posted to our website as well as this presentation. We ask that you turn all this in by January 8th. You can turn it in sooner for sure. You can fax it to me or to Pam Brewer. Uh, and the numbers there on the screen, 989-2012. And then within about a week or a week and a half, we will get back with you and let you know by January 20th uh, that you've been accepted and we're pay we're planning on paying for you. Um, or unfortunately, you know, all the slots have been taken and we won't be able to pay for you and would then ask if you're interested in applying um, even without uh, our payment. We don't make our decisions based on who is self-paying or who is um, only interested 
in the in the licensure cohort paying for you. So let's look real quickly at that application. Um, it is two parts. This is the part, the first page that East Carolina res uh, receives. And so this asks you, are you going to be a degree seeking student um, looking for a master's degree or you want to be non-degree? Most folks in this cohort um, are going to choose, I plan to be non-degree seeking. Um, that can always change into degree seeking. Um, it's whatever fits best for you. Uh, it's going to ask you a little bit about your licensure. Um, I apologize, some of the dates in this application we have to update. I'll do that before we post it to the website, but the rest of the application is pretty standard. And then the second part of this is somewhat redundant. This is the part that um, we keep here in Onslow County Schools, and this tells us if you're interested in uh, applying only if we're funding you or regardless. So again, we don't make any decision based on that. In fact, I don't even look at that um, when we're making the decision. It's just so I know whether to pass your application on to ECU if you're selected or not. We do ask that you initial um, beside each one of these items. Um, these are things that um, we've talked about here in this presentation. So we ask that you initial each one of these um, and then that you print and sign the bottom of this form. So uh, that is kind of our record that, that we have gone over this with you. One other thing um, before we close out this presentation, we've captured some frequently asked questions from uh, our past our past folks. Most of that is in this presentation now, but we like to keep this online just so uh, if you have any questions now or later, you can scroll back through here. Again, we'll talk about the costs, what's expected. Do you have to take the GRE? No, you don't have to take the GRE. Um, if you decide to go for a master's degree, then you may need to go back and, and check those boxes for the university talked about the letter of intent or interest um, and then this is probably the most interesting part for you as a potential cohort member um, our past code we always ask our past cohort folks when you finished what do you wish you would have known um, and so these are the things um, that they they talked about the time intense nature of this making sure you get your application information in on time choosing a good partner to work with for the summer camp. Um, just all these different little pieces here. So I won't read these all off to you um, because I think we've talked about most of them throughout the presentation. But it's always nice to have it in the words of folks who have gone through the, the program. So we thank you for your time in looking at the presentation. Um, my extension here is here on your screen. So is Miss Michelle Chadwick's as well as Pam Brewer. Um, contact us anytime, email, phone. Um, we're glad to, to chat with you about the opportunity. Um, and again, if you're interested or if anyone else is interested, um, we just ask that your applications are back to us by Friday, January 8th. And all this will be posted on the website, um, which is perhaps how you're getting to it now. So um, thank you again for your time. And we look forward to hearing from you and working with you in the future.